All right, y'all. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and sisters of YouTube. This is Pastor Val. I know that um, uh, I haven't been doing my due diligence as far as keeping up with the videos. But, um, it, it's hot here um, at Straightway or during this time of the year, and, and we have a lot of work that goes on. As a matter of fact, we try to maximize the amount of time that we have, especially when the weather permits, uh, because we've been having a little bit more rain than, than usual. But we always try to maximize the time uh, that we have because we know in the winter, you know, we, we don't have that much building time. Uh, we don't have that much time where we can do a lot of those things that we can normally do in the summer, especially in the growing season and the garden months because we're experimenting uh, with a new style and a new type of way of gardening. And um, it has its ups and it has its downs. Uh, and I'm learning and I think that I'll make a video a little bit later to bring clarity uh, um, and understanding of what I believe about uh, this particular type of, of gardening itself. Uh, now the greenhouse is thriving, it's doing exactly what it's always done and still doing it. And it's just a, uh, a wonderful investment. As a matter of fact, we have two of them uh, and I'm seriously considering getting another one. But anyway, before the wicked end um, comes up here, and I know that means you call it the weekend, but I call it the wicked end. Um, I wanted to touch on something um, that is ultimately, or oh, let me just go this route, utterly amazing. Now, I want you to listen to me. You know, a lot of people, when they first hear Pastor Dow, it's a very strange thing because, you know, often in our society, uh, we, we usually don't see uh, preachers, uh, ministers, teachers that are very vocal on, on so many different fronts, you know, the social, the political, the economic, and especially what they call nowadays the religious front. And, and of course, you know, if you've been listening to me any length of time, I often say over and over and over again that we may all be entitled to our own opinion. And we are. Um, but we're not entitled to our own facts. And with that said, we need to start listening to people with a discerning ear. I mean, really, truly listening to what's coming from their heart. Because what comes out of this mouth does come from the heart and is believed from the heart. Um, and don't be deceived by that because there's a lot, a lot of advertisement going on out there today that is seeking to change your mind. I was thinking the other day, let's go back a hundred years and listen to me very closely. If you walk down the street or you were in a town or a city and you smarted off to someone, uh, that day you may not be going home. When you think about that, that kept people at a very honorable and respectable level of dealing with each other. You think about that for a second. Now, today, <coughs> excuse me. Now, today in our society, you see that there's no discipline, or there's no honor. Uh, people just say whatever comes to their mind. Uh, but if we live, back a hundred something years ago and, and of course most people would consider people you know a hundred years and on or back was a, a kind of like a brutal type people I think it's pretty brutal when people can perpetuate injustices say anything that comes to their mind and cause mental and physical injury upon those unsuspected mind of those that are weak I think that that's a grave injustice um, and of course you know when you think about the spirits um, that are being promoted today um, and how we defend certain things. Um, no wonder our society is so screwed up today because everybody says something they believe it's valid. They really truly do. But I guarantee you, a lot of these people that run their mouth today, I don't care what front, they be on the media front, the social front, the political front, the economic front, or the religious front, a lot of these people would not be running their mouth the way they run it today knowing that that day you may be standing out in the street getting ready to have a drawdown with one of these right here uh, because, you know, those are the type of insults was not permitted and put up with. And I don't believe that we should run around insulting people myself. Or I really, truly don't. I think that we should be honorable and respectable uh, to people. But the nature of this video is about guns, you know, this thing right here. Now, th this is my weapon of choice right here. Everybody has their own, and, you know, most people like, you know, the fact of having a whole bunch of rounds and all this other stuff. 
But I, I, I personally go for reliability and accuracy. Did you hear what I said? Reliability and accuracy. And, and, and this is very reliable and very accurate. Reliability and accuracy. That's what I go for. And, you know, when you got a laser or you have a laser uh, with a particular uh, gun that has been zeroed, you know, to you, your specifications and stuff, um, you don't have to worry about looking down the sights in case you have to defend yourself. You can actually just wherever you point that trailer, you know, that wherever you point that laser, and you have to practice this right here more than anything, trigger control. You need to really truly practice that so you don't jerk and and, uh, and pull and all this other thing um, that comes along so you can be accurate in it. But this actually um, helps speed up the process time. You know what I mean? If you had to ever, ever had to pull this. Now, anybody who has any extensive amount of gun training or or like, like myself, you know, you're spending a stint in the military and stuff, while you may be training, the last thing you ever want to do is ever have to pull this on another human being um, with there always being a chance of taking their life away from them. Um, because in this country, you know, everybody has a right to life, liberty, and a pursuit of happiness. I think what disturbs me more than anything is the culture um, that the media, as well as the powers that be, are trying to cram down our thoughts. Now, I had somebody send me um, a, a particular article, and I'm going to see if I can put it up in front of you. I don't know if you can read it or not, but I'm going to see if I can put it up in front of you, and then I'm going to turn around and read it. Now, notice, it, it, it has this right here, guns, and we're going to bring some clarity, because the people who actually make the laws are the people who are Matter of fact, they're the most lawless individuals that there is because they believe that they're above the law. And and I see it all the time. I see cops. I see police. I see um, uh, so-called, quote-unquote, elected officials breaking the law all the time because they believe that they're above the law. I don't know who's giving them this uh, certain type of what you call diplomatic immunity. But then we have our media, our, our actual media, Constantly cramming down the throats of the people, the, you know, the majority of the populace, over 360 million people in America, they're trying to do whatever they can to make sure that they take away the one staple out of you and your family's hand to defend yourself. I remember some time ago, and you have to understand, when you see a picture of this gun and me using this skin color black man, that already brings about an alarm in this country. And that's not a racist statement, so pause for a moment and listen to me very clearly. I remember when um, uh, Martin Luther King, he went to apply for a gun permit. Do you know that they denied him of a gun permit? Not because he wasn't a model citizen. They denied him of a gun permit simply because of the color of his skin. Now, before you jump off the deep end and get all mad and upset with me and everything, rather than getting offended, how about just go check that out? Because, you know, I have people accuse me all the time uh, of trying to make things uh, what they have been trained to say over and over again, racist statements. I'm not making a racist statement. Anything that I say, it's facts. You may not like it. That doesn't change the fact of the matter. Um, and of course, you know, fear is what causes all these 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 legislators or these chicken hawks um, to to make these laws, and and because it's only for the preservation of themselves. Now look at this. I want to read you uh, this chart that I just got finished showing you about guns right here, because it's okay for everybody else to have a gun and be defended by a gun. It's like um, Bloomberg up in uh, New York and and Harry Reid and, and and Joseph. Lieberman and all these other people and Diane Feinstein and, uh, and and all these people that are so-called allegedly against guns and the president against guns, they all the reason why they're against it because they don't have to carry them because they have anywhere between five and fifteen and twenty bodyguards that are armed with these. So then they turn around and they try to manipulate your conscience, telling you don't need it while the whole time they're protected by the thing that they seem like that they're standing against and they hate. And I did a video some time ago because 
these idiots today say that guns kill people. Now, I have never, ever in this short period of time, and I've been on this earth almost 50 years, I have never, ever, ever in my life ever saw a gun jump up off a table and personally assault, threaten, or kill anyone. I know that's a new concept. I, I know it is, but I've never seen it. And of course, in religion, especially Christianity, when you see this, the first thing people do is because all of the advertisement that has been submitted to your mind, the first thing they do is they, they, they you know, they've got you trained uh, to think uh, evil, 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 evil. But at the same time, you don't think it's evil for the people who break the laws, who so-called make the laws, break the laws and exempt themselves from the laws. And, and YouTube is filled with all types of people, especially policemen here, abusing American citizens because of the authority that they have from the state. Not because they have any authority of themselves, because they don't. Just because they have a uniform and a badge, therefore they abuse their authority over you. And if you notice, if you haven't, in case you haven't noticed, the state always defends the people that work for it or subject to it. That's why we don't never see any cops. Uh, or anybody ever going to prison or going to jail or getting the electric chair or the death penalty um, when they kill somebody, murder somebody in cold, cold blood. They always say when a citizen does it, the news media get out there and they manipulate your mind. They did this and they did that and they did this. But when a cop does it or when a, somebody in the legislation or, or the judicial process or one of these so-called elected officials do something. Well, we we have to don't we don't need to jump to conclusions. We all need to exercise some pause here, and, and and all evidence is not in, and we are still investigating the matter. But when a citizen does it, they did this, they did that, they did, and you are pounded, pounded, pounded by the news media constantly. With that perspective, it is all of the chain. I sit and watch it. It's like watching a dog and pony show with me. And I'm sitting and looking. I watch them all the time. I'm sitting and looking. I'm going to look at this. And you got 360 million Americans. And probably 350 million are stupid as hell. They put their feelings and emotions above facts. They don't understand anything. And, and they will, I, I, I mean, ignorance is winning, winning a war. <laughs> they really, truly winning a war. I mean, ignorant folks. Um, and no matter how much evidence and how much truth you put forth, people, whatever they got in their mind, that's what they believe and that's what they think is the truth. Uh, not that they've done their own independent research themselves, but the fix is in. The manipulation, the coercion, um, the, the, the domination, and the vine for your mind, the fix is already in. But I'm going to show you how hypocritical we are. Uh, because, see, in this nation, uh, there was a time that everybody was armed. Everybody was armed, except the slaves. But, but other than that, everybody was armed. They carry armed. Now, look at this. Guns. All right? These are the people... And these are the places that are defended with guns. But then watch this at the end. Guns. We defend our president with guns. We defend our congressmen with guns. We defend our governors with guns. We defend our celebrities with guns. We defend our sporting events with guns. We defend our jewelry stores with guns. We defend our banks with guns. We defend our office buildings with guns. We defend our factories with guns. We defend our courts with guns. We defend our children with a sign that reads, this is a gun-free zone. And then call someone with a gun if there is an emergency. The hypocrisy, the placating, the, it is just off of 
the proverbial chain. It is amazing, isn't it? And then they want you, if somebody breaks into your home or someone assaults your family or your person, they want you to call 911 or try to frantically try to dial 911. You know how long it's going to take them to get there? That's why I say you go ahead and call 911 you want to, but you're going to die. But if you're prepared and you have armed resistance on you and, and you don't have to worry about waiting on the so-called law to get there because the truth is, the truth is, and you need to know this, the law, the policemen, the sheriffs, and all that, they are under no obligation whatsoever at all to defend or to protect you and your person. That is in their books and that is their law. And if I'm lying, policemen, sheriffs, all you law enforcement officials, chime in down here and tell me how much of a lie that I am. Because I know that I'm telling the truth. And that's the truth straight away. So, I tell you what. How about most of you people, rather than flying off the deep end and flying off the handle when you see one of these right here. How about you use a little bit of self-autonomy and independent thinking. And start thinking. Even Jesus himself had armed resistance around. He had 12 disciples who carried swords. And I know you manipulated Christians out there will say, well, he told, he told Peter, he didn't get rid of that sword. No, he did not tell him to get rid of it. So he told him to put it back up in his place. See, Peter was trying to prevent the will of Yah from being done. He never once told him to get rid of his sword. As a matter of fact, he said a direct opposite. The instruction was in Luke twenty two thirty six. That if you don't have a sword, see the sword was there. There was no such thing as a firearm back then, but this is the modern day sword. If you don't have a sword, you sell your cloak and you go buy one. That is the instructions of Jesus Christ, Yahshua HaMashiach. And then many of you people are sitting there living in states and cities and towns where it's so-called <clears throat> illegal for you to defend and to protect yourself and your property. And your family, I, I, it's hard. I can't wrap my mind around. I just, it, it just, it, it's rough. It really truly is. But I'm sure of one thing. This chaotic ignorance is deeply and sociably embedded in the collective subconscious of men's mind. And not even Yah himself can remove it.